Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a DIY, you've already seen by the title, you can see in the thumbnail, I have decided to upcycle, if you will, my bedside tables. So I bought these from Kmart, I reckon two years ago. They, like as soon as I got my fuck the legs off, like they had these funny little legs at the bottom and we just got rid of those. They were just like that laminated wood stuff. So not cute in my room, that is just all white. I wanted to keep everything white so that I can have like a feature candle, a bright candle, a bunch of flowers, just have something to give it a bit of everything white. I can change up the colors and that was the vibe I was going for. These drawers aren't the best drawers, gonna be honest here. They are falling to bits. The things come off when you pull them open sometimes. But to be honest, we don't really store much shit in there. And like most of the time we're home, we're downstairs. Like our room is really, our bedside tables are really just to put shit on. Do you know what I mean? Charge our phone at night, water bottle, and then just to look cute. And the whole thing was that they weren't looking cute. So I've seen heaps of paintings done with you know how they like it's basically this but on a painting on a canvas so it's like the white um textured stuff and some people do it with paint but i feel like that's the dumb way to do it because it's just like going to take ages to dry and then i've seen people do it with like the plaster and i was like you know what i'm going to do it to my bedside tables i'm actually currently in the middle of doing this but you'll see that in the video as we continue so keep watching if you want to see the diy queen do some shit <laughs> Okay, so these are the things that you're gonna need. I'm just gonna put you down. So I got the sanding block. Everything's from Bunnings. I can't remember how much it cost me. I feel like maybe around a hundred. Um, but you might have some of the stuff at home. So like, if you have a white paint, you won't need to buy that. Um, primer. I feel like we have one in the garage, but I just grabbed one anyway. And then this, um, like gap filler, plaster, gap filler, putty. Smooth cut? Not sure. Anyway, so yeah, I bought a sanding block. Just use sandpaper if you've got that. Grip lock primer, so that is just gonna help anything stick because obviously my surface is like a laminated fake wood thing. So I got that so that things would stick more. Then you want your putty slash gap filler, whatever you want to use. I know there's a whole lot of different brands. And then I got these spatulas. And this big one, which I didn't really even end up using the big one. I used this one to get the stuff out and like lay it on, which I will show you guys anyway. And then this is an art tool, but this was the best thing to make the patterns. Um, and then just a white paint for over the top. I haven't done a top coat, probably should, but you know, it's fine. So I've started sanding this whole thing. Like I said, the, um, it's like a laminated wood, so. I've just given it like a real quick sand. We're obviously going to use that um, grip lock primer so that will help it stay as well. But I just thought, you know, a light sand wouldn't hurt. I've actually done the whole thing. I just need to do the top. Okay, so this is the grip lock primer. As you can see, it's white. And you just whack it on. I only do a real thin coat of this because obviously it's going to have like a thick layer of plaster over the top and then the white paint. So it doesn't actually matter that it's not thick. Um, and also I want it to dry fast. So I'm not wasting any time. I don't even know if this is, like if you need to do this because I feel like the plaster stuff would stick anyway. But I don't know. I just felt like I probably should do it because the surface is real, um, it's just that fake like wood laminate stuff from Kmart. Okay, now the whole thing is very roughly primed. As you can see, I didn't do the back because that's gonna be against the wall. So it's just a waste of time. So that's it. As you can see, I've just done it real rough. Like it's all gonna be covered anyway, so. Who really cares it's just there as like a precaution if the plaster didn't stick so now i'll wait for that to dry it says 30 minutes but like the side's already dry and i did that side first but yeah i'll wait for i don't know maybe another 20 and then i'll start doing the plaster okay the next step is obviously the plaster so the first time i did it i did it with this 
And then I found this little art tool that we have. I think it's for mixing paint, but also obviously like on canvases, you can do the texture with this stuff. Or there's like an, a special art one. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is if you can get one of these little spatula things, it makes the pattern or the texture way better. So try and get one of these. That's what it looks like, little close up. Just going in with this one. What you're gonna do is, I use this one just to scoop it out. You can use this one. You wanna do it quite thick. I'm actually gonna get people to come help me. So like I can show you how I can like kind of teach you. Do you know what I mean? Might be easier if he like fucks it up and then I can like tell him how to fix it and then that might show you guys how to do it properly. I don't know. Anyway, you wanna put it on quite thick. I'm just gonna record this. I'm gonna do it for this as well. You want to put it on quite thick and then you literally just make designs. So let's go like this. Better? Alright. We might actually end up needing more of this stuff. Yeah, it doesn't how how much have you gone through? I guess it was like up to there. Was that on the other one? Huh? No, this was the one. No, but did you have another pot for the other one? No. Oh. Do you reckon? Yeah. Okay, so you kind of want to like... It just depends how you want it to look. See? You're just going to like get a blob. You don't have to cover the whole thing. And I like to make the little like swooshes. It's like putting icing on a cake. Yeah, it literally is. It's like doing a cake. See, even that's cool. Little blob. The side's going to be against the wall, so you're not even really going to see it, but... But then the other thing you can do is get this. Whack it on, and then like... See, it's a bit of a thinner one. Mm. Remember, the thicker you do it, the longer it's going to take to dry. But she's cute. Then you can kind of take a step back, have a look. Are you going to do some or not? Yeah. Oh, you think it's fun now, eh? It's good, eh? Go meet. Are you going to use a little tool? Yep. What do I do? Just different shapes. What about that yeah. one? That's cool. Yep, that's cool too. Can I do that one? No. I don't know. <laughs> I did the same thing to the front. Um, I'm gonna work my way around now and do the other side. And then if I have stuff left, I'll come back to it and finish like the gaps. I feel like on my other one, I don't know if I had heaps of gaps, but like you can imagine that once it's all painted, it's just gonna be, you know, like textured. So yeah, I just need to do the top and then this side. And then also, don't forget to get the edges like this. So what I'm gonna do is just like go around with a little, oh, that's gone in the hole, oh no. Um, go around the edge and just like, you just kind of like flick it. And then you can like smooth it over. But you want it to be textured so it matches the whole thing and it looks like it's all plaster. So yeah, just do like little like bits of it on there edges and then yeah cute what i did here i just put like a whole lot of it on and then you almost want to like i don't know if you can see you want to like scrape and then smooth like use that kind of motion does that make sense and then like some bits you might want to leave you know on like big blobs it really doesn't matter i suppose as long as it just it's quite smooth, like I don't know, I don't like it being like that. See how that's got like all the bits in it? I like the bigger blobs. So like when that dries, it'll just be like a smooth, big bit of plaster. Okay, so we just got home, we've been out shopping. As you can see, I'll flip you around in a second and show you, but we've left it for like, how long is that thing? Like at least four hours. And the thicker parts of the plaster still isn't dry. So, I mean, it's not like, oh, see, yeah, that part's wet to touch. 
Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna touch it anymore because I'm gonna fuck it up. I'm gonna wait for the whole thing to dry, which means I'm probably not gonna paint it till tomorrow. So I guess you'd wanna like, maybe even do the first part at night and then you can leave it overnight and then in the morning, like it's time to, you know, ready to dry. It's dry and ready to paint. So I'll flip you around. So you can see the thicker parts haven't dried yet. So when it's dry, it goes like that light color. Um, and then you're gonna be able to paint over it. I will see you guys again when this is all dry and I paint it white. Never knew I could feel that much. Oh, and everyone. So this is what it looks like when it's dry. Kind of cool, to be honest, like if you covered the whole thing. I'm just gonna do a little video on here for my TikTok. Um, yeah, so that's what it looks like. As you can see, it's all the same color, so there's none of that dark gray anymore, which is what we wanna see. So, literally straightforward. Now I'm just going to paint it. Try and make sure your brush, I don't know if I mentioned, but um, wash your brush as soon as you're like done with it. So like as soon as I was done with that, what's that shit called? Grip lock. I washed it so that it didn't go stiff. So now it's not stiff. I'm dipping into my white paint. To be honest, if I had my chance again, I would have um, got a paint that is more of like an off-white, just so it's not, you know, super like white in my room. Just cause like as much as everything's white, it's still kind of like creamy. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers and it's not too bad. So I'm doing a layer of paint, just make sure it is actually dry, I guess, because um, paint, uh, sorry, the plaster stuff comes off with water. And I don't know, I guess paint's water-based, not sure. Anyway, just make sure it's dry before you put the paint on. And also, it's kind of tricky to paint because you have to go in like all different directions because you want to get it in all the gaps, but then you also don't want like blobs of paint forming because then you sort of lose some of the you know, the patterns you've made. So I would just try and do like a thin layer. Get in all the bits, go all different ways. And then it's gonna need two layers. So the other one I did, I did one layer, let it dry, checked it the next day and it was, um, well, did I check it that afternoon? I think I checked it that afternoon and, um, oh, fucking paint everywhere. And it definitely, like it was just patchy. Because obviously like the the plaster went a nice white, but the bit underneath had only just had the base coat, so it was like a bit more thin. So yeah, two coats, and that should do it. So yeah, I'll check back in with you guys when it's all finished, I guess, because I'm just doing this and then I'll do another layer of paint. I feel like this is better lighting for you guys to see. So, see how you have to like all different angles to try and get in all the bits and then like when you actually paint the whole thing white the boys no it's all right you kind of lose i don't know it becomes a bit more subtle just because it is all one color whereas right now like you know you can hard out see where the plaster is so yeah when you paint it all one color you just leave with some nice texture and you can probably start to see what I meant when I like said I like the big long bits of plaster as opposed to like these little oh, what's that little drips not sure not my best work over here will look way better okay second coat of paint is about to go on hopefully you guys can see what it looks like with one so like still cute you could leave it like that it just sort of gives off like a rustic vibe which isn't what I'm going for yeah, so I want it to be like a nice crisp white just like the canvases are like. See how you can see like this obviously isn't as, because it's just on that wood. Um, so yeah, it hasn't picked up the white as much. So second coat going on now and it should be cute. Okay, this is the finished product. This is the first one I did. So this is my one. Honestly, love it. I feel like I should have got a recording of when they were wooden so you could see like what it looks like in the room but it's just so much cooler now how it's all white this is the one that you saw me do so 
as you can see. So cute. Obsessed with that. And so now we can have a play with like bright colours and stuff. So obviously I've got these candles. They're from my mum's business called Cinnamon Oyster. And then just my Jacquemus book, which Jazz got for me. And I'm going to get some like flowers in here, like a bright, you know, a little bright bunch with a cool vase and you're away. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was fun. If you didn't know, now you know. I have been a DIY gal for a very long time. Obviously growing up as a big girl, not being able to find lots of like clothes of my size. I was constantly, literally like, what did I do? Well, skirts as tops, made different things, had mum on the sewing machine. I'd have a vision, I'd be like, let's bring it to life. I've just always loved DIY shit. And I feel like I don't do much of it. So I hope you loved it. If you did, thumbs up, comment, all the things. Also, Vita did this canvas a while ago, but we're wanting to switch up the colors. So I feel like that might be the next video. Me and Vita will attack the painting and I'm thinking like, I'm gonna paint it all white and then do some color. Anyway, that's for a whole nother video. I hope you enjoyed, Mwah. kisses to everyone and I'll see you in my next vid.